Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I come from a country where 70% of the population is youth. And what keeps me awake at night is how to live a better world for future generations. It has been more than three decades since climate change is a global political issue. Agreements have been adopted. We have made good strides in combining the climate agenda with the socio-political and economic dimensions of sustainable development, but the assessment of our actions under the global stock tech shows that we are far from the 1.5 degree target. This has a dramatic impact on the most affected countries. While activism is necessary, action is what will get us results. Success can only be measured by the actions we take, not by the decisions we make. As we gather here in the United Arab Emirates, a country recognized for having transformed a desert into a green heaven under the leadership, of, the leadership and vision of the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. I applaud the strong commitment of the COP28 presidency to climate action. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Africa is a strong ally in fighting climate change. And we are striving to drive green growth both within the continent and globally. However, we remain highly exposed to the impact of climate despite contributing the least. Recurrent droughts, intensified floods, and livestock loss are some of the many climate shocks that have affected lives and livelihoods of our people over the years. For Ethiopia, the battle to protect and heal our planet is a battle for growth and prosperity. Allow me to highlight a few homegrown solutions we have been implementing towards reducing emission and building resilience. First, the Ethiopian Green Legacy Initiative, a powerful natural-based natural solution launched in 2019. Over the last five years, we established 130,000 nurseries across the country, and yearly, millions of people mobilize in seedling, planting, and seedling management. Our Green Legacy Initiative represents a proactive response to pressing environmental and socio-economical challenges. It reduces carbon emissions, preserves our biodiversity, creates jobs, and boosts sectors such as tourism. I am proud to say that this initiative has received remarkable success by planting 32.5 billion seedlings. Our target is to reach 15 billion by 2026. When completed, the initiative will become the largest afforestation project in the world. The impact of our initiative extends beyond borders as we are sharing seedlings with our neighboring countries. It can further play a catalytic role in Africa and complement existing initiatives such as the Africa Forest Landscape Restoration Initiative and the Great Green Wall. Second is our, our action on transforming our food system. We believe that climate, biodiversity, water, people, and food systems are strongly interrelated. We have successful interventions planting various drought-tolerant crops and using climate-smart irrigation-based technology. Noteworthy is our national wheat production program, whereby we produce 
6 million hectares in one year, making Ethiopia the largest wheat producer in Africa. This has relieved us from decades of wheat import dependency and made us a wheat exporting country. As part of the Green Legacy Initiative, we have extensively expanded the cultivation of perennial crops and fruits. Furthermore, to diversify sectors prone to the impacts of climate change and promote nutrition-sensitive agriculture, we are increasing our country's supply of poultry, dairy, livestock, and honey through a program called Yelemat Torufat, loosely translated as a bounty of the basket. We have an urban initiative whereby we encourage eco-friendly and resource-efficient greening and farming methods. Our sustainable agricultural pr practice optimizes effective water management and prioritizes investments in renewable energy-based irrigation systems. Third, we have been investing extensively in renewable and green energy resources. Ethiopia has the potential to generate over 60,000 megawatts of clean energy by expanding hydropower, solar, wind, and geothermal sources. Our, our target is to triple our current power generation capacity and double our energy utilization efficiency by 2030. This will allow us to achieve universal access to electricity, minimize dependency on biomass fuel, and provide the opportunity to our industries to reach their net zero targets by 2050. Last are our bold actions in the transport sector. We adopted policy, policies to encourage the use of electrical vehicles that resulted in a sharp increase of hybrid and electric cars on our roads while reducing the macroeconomic burden of importing fuel. Similarly, Ethiopian Airlines is modernizing its fleet by acquiring new energy-efficient aircrafts. Furthermore, we have electrified railways, a growing non-motorized transport infrastructure, and we are expanding our mass transit system. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, these are concrete examples of action. We are actioning our nationally determined contribution and our progress is a testament to our commitment to the Paris Agreement. I now call upon a collective global action for a stepped-up climate agenda. The major challenge in scaling solution is the cost of capital and how international financing, fina, financing is structured. No country can effectively confront the climate challenge if debt is a burden. This is why the G20 must work to implement bolder and timely debt relief plans to help the most affected countries overcome debt distress, address climate challenge, and pursue more equitable and sustainable economic growth objectives. At the same time, pledged funds must be dispersed. I would like to conclude by urging all parties to negotiate in good faith and come up with innovative outcomes as we collectively tackle the impact of climate change. While you are here working hard for successful COP28 outcomes, I invite you to visit our Green Legacy Pavilion and enjoy a good cup of Ethiopian coffee. I thank you.